Hey what's up, welcome back to another quick flutter tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you how to make this nice little timeline widget and it's actually really easy so let me show you by jumping into the code. By the way if you're a beginner trying to get into app development, I wrote a little handbook for people like you who have no coding experience at all. I designed the book with a complete beginner in mind so the book starts off with the basics of programming and then I show you all of the essential widgets and concepts for you to start building apps yourself. This is a book that I really wish I had when I first started Flutter so yeah I hope this helps the beginners out there. I'll have it linked below. So I opened up a brand new Flutter project and just to keep everyone on the same page in my main function I'm running my app which brings us to this home page. And this one is just a blank scaffold, so you should just get a white blank app like this. Now the first thing to do is to go to your popspec.yaml and we're going to import this package called timeline tile and save it. So once you got that, let's just close all these tabs. And just to show you real quick, if I have a list view and you start typing timeline tile, you can see there it is. So just hit enter. And without any customization, if you just save it, you can see that's what it looks like. And so if you just have a bunch of these timeline tiles, then it kind of connects up. And if you look in the options here, you can see that there's an option for is first, right? So if I say it's true for the first one, then that's where the timeline will begin. And similarly, just for the ending one, you can say is last is true. And then you get this nice little timeline. Cool, so that's the actual really basic basics of it. But to be a little bit more practical, let's get rid of all this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new folder called components. And I'm just gonna create a new file here called my timeline tile. So let's create our own version of it. So again, what we're gonna return is just a timeline tile. Now, when we create this widget, let's ask for a few things. So like I showed you before, I need to know if it's gonna be the first if it's going to be the last and one extra one I want to have here is if it's in the past and I'll talk about that a little bit later on but it's just to show the progress within the timeline so in your timeline tile let's just give it the appropriate parameters and so what you can do is come back to my list view and we can have a bit of a plan here so just to keep it simple I'm just going to have three tiles here so the start middle and the end so if you start typing my timeline tile, you should see it right there. And let's fill this out. Let's say true, false, true. And I'm just gonna copy this, do it for the middle one. Cool, so there's our little timeline that we had from before. And by the way, it's a bit too close to the edge. Let's just give it some padding, just horizontally. Yeah, that's, that's better. Now coming back to our timeline tile, let's start to decorate it up. Okay, now the first thing is let's decorate the lines. So you can see in the line style, let's give it a color. So I'm just gonna give it a deep purple color. And the other thing we can customize is the actual icon, right? So those circles. So for the indicators, you can control almost anything. So let's say like the width, if I say 40, it'll be a bigger circle. So you can just control that. And the color, so we can say again, I'm just gonna say purple. And even within the circle, you can give it an icon. So an appropriate icon here might be like a tick. So let's go for the done icon. Now it looks like just the way we did the colors, we can't really see it, right? So let's make this white. And that's looking pretty good. So you can obviously decorate this however you want. One other thing that's useful to control is if I just wrap this entire thing in a sized box, you can control the height. And just to put the comment here, this is just for the gap between the events. Right, so you can see that the lines are more longer now. So I'm just gonna keep it at like 200. Now something cool you can do, just to make this more UI and UX friendly, like when a user is looking at this timeline, let's say like they placed an order and then it's getting delivered to your house, then we wanna know the progress of this timeline, right? So that's why I asked for this Boolean is passed. And I like to show this using colors. So you can see in the line style, let's say, is passed. So if it is passed, then let's just give it the deep purple color. And if it isn't passed, then let's give it a lighter shade, right? So I'm just gonna do the same thing for the icon as well. Just give it a lighter color if it's not passed yet. Even the icon itself, I'm just gonna kind of hide the tick. Yeah, so this kind of shows us the progress of this timeline, right? Now the other essential thing here is the event card. So 
you can see here in the end child you can place another widget next to it okay so again just to keep our code nice and clean i'm gonna create another component so a new file let's just call it event card and i'm just gonna keep it super simple so let's just have a container here and a text widget just saying hello right so you can see there it is now it's a bit too close to our timeline so now at this point we can just kind of do the fun bit right we can just decorate it so let's add some margin that's better and let's actually decorate this container give it some padding and you all know i don't like sharp corners so let's just border radius and make it a bit more round and so same with this event card it would be nice to know if this is in the past or if it's in the future right and we'll also ask for a child so instead of just displaying hello let's give it the child when we create the widget in our home page cool so one last thing is let's just use this is past boolean just so that everything lines up with the colors cool so if i come back to my timeline we have to give it those two parameters that we asked for right so is past let's just give it the is past parameter and for the child i'm also going to create this as a parameter so that we can create it in our home page right so you can see that we've got the red squiggles now so we can say event card and now here you can give it whatever you want right so let's say order placed the second one can be something like order you know shipped and the last one can be order delivered and that's it that's how you create a nice little timeline like this so i can see many many use cases for a timeline whether you order or like you buy a package and it's getting delivered to your door you know something like uber eats or uber or literally so many use cases for a timeline like this so hopefully you learned something let me know if you have any questions with any of the code i'll try to come around and hang out in the comments and cool so outside of that that's it for this tutorial i'm gonna catch you guys in the next one